very aggressive maneuver left or right to go after its target. Hey, hey guys, how you going? Welcome back to Hearns TV. It's me again, Dan, and I'm gonna take you through an unboxing video of a really, really cool model. Um, this one's super impressive. I really like this one a lot, actually. And it is my great pleasure to introduce to you uh, from Great Wall Hobbies, the 48 scale MiG-29 Fulcrum. Yeah, now a bit about the MiG-29. Um, the prototype first flew in 1977, and it entered service in 1982. Um, it has flown with the Soviet Union and now Russian Air Force, the Ukrainian Air Force, the Indian Air Force is also a major operator, the Iraqi Air Force, um, the uh, North Korea operate about 30 of them. Um, yeah, 1,000, just over 1,600 were produced and approximately 800 are still in service today. It's one of the most popular uh, fourth generation fighters in the world and because it is a really really cool jet and it's also really good looking as well so I'm going to take you through uh, the unboxing of this model and uh, yeah cool all right so let's do it all right well first of all the top of the box the front of this is is really good it's re really impressive this really jumped out at me when I was having a look at um uh, which uh, which kit to do a video on and you can see that how attractive the MiG-29 is it looks it looks like a shark almost the um, the way it's uh, all blended together like that it looks like a really impressive aggressive fighter jet so I'll put that just all right that's over there now we'll have a quick look at the instructions and the instruction the instructions are just as impressive as the box nicely brightly colored big and have a look yes easy to follow there's some photo etch parts with this as well that we'll sh i'll show you a little bit later and uh yeah pieces going together so i'll take you through where's the ah this is what i wanted to show you the camouflage patterns as you can see this is a this is one of the early versions of the uh, mig-29 and um, the camouflage patterns for the Soviet Soviet Air Force. There's a lot of um, a lot of uh, military aircraft are doing digital camouflage now, but this was um, er early parts of the uh, before the breakup of the of the Soviet Union. And I'm sure some of you have all heard about the Ghost of Kiev, that um, fictitious uh, Ukrainian fighter pilot. He was allegedly flying a, a MiG-29. Uh, yeah. So. Let's start, we'll have a look at, remember 48 scale, we'll have a look at the overall body of the aircraft first, because I want to explain a little bit to you. As you can see, here's the underside and here's the top part of the, uh, of the aircraft. Now, the thing about the MiG-29 is it doesn't have a fuselage in the traditional sense of the word. Um, it has sort of a blended, wing and body configuration, which is what um, helps to add to its unbelievable maneuverability and agility. Um, this is considered to be the counterpart of the American F-16. And we'll have a look at the top part here. You've got a 40 degree sweep on the wings here. And that's there's your cockpit and the, uh, there's the radar where the, where the radar would be housed in the nose of the aircraft. Here, innovative feature on the MiG-29, there were actually air inlets here and when it was taxiing on the ground the air intakes which were the engines were here in nice in the cells and the where the air would be sucked in to make the uh, engines operate would when it was on the ground taxiing the doors were actually closed so it prevented um foreign objects on the ground being sucked into the uh, air intake and damaging the aircraft so these were the only ones that were open when it was uh, taxiing on the ground. And the Russians did that because they always thought that in the field of battle, that uh, most of the time your area of operation is not gonna be very clean and you have, might have to get off the ground in a big, big hurry and there might be things in the way. Very good idea though. But here, here as you can see, these are the vent ports that will go there on the, on the upper part of the aircraft. And on the underside here, you can see there's just the nose, 
that goes into sort of a dorsal hump there, and then the two nacelles for the engines. Yeah, no real traditional fuselage, blended wing and body. Everything was a lifting surface, and it was actually designed around a center, um, center fuel tank, actually. And move those over there. Let's have a bit more of a look, shall we? Ah, here we have the tail of the aircraft and then the tail planes and the air intakes uh, for the, the uh, engine nacelles. Um, very powerful engines on the MiG-29 actually. It had a maximum speed of Mach 2.25 uh, that was actually a, fair, a little bit faster than its counterpart. The F it was faster not only than its counterpart, the F-16, but also, also a fair bit f uh, faster than the F-A-18. Uh, which was the uh, naval uh, multi-role fighter uh, for the for the American forces. Um, the engines were quite smoky, I led to believe, uh, that you'd be able to see them from quite a distance away, which would be a slight disadvantage in um, in air-to-air -air combat. And now, I'm going to show you now. What I like about this as well, as um, I don't know if you could see it on the upper parts and the lower parts of the fuselage, but the details on this kit are really impressive. They're really impressive, like down to the sm very small conceivable details. Uh, here, this is the center line fuel tank that went in between the engine nacelles. There were seven hard points on uh, the MiG-29, three under each wing and one down the center. And uh, in the center line, when it had a fuel tank there, it actually wasn't able to fire its main gun, the 30 millimeter main gun, because the center line fuel tank was actually blocking the, eject the ejection port for the shells. Although that was rectified on later variants of the MiG-29. I think there was a total of 19 variants actually. And here you can see the engines and all of the details. Actually, I'll hold this up to the camera. So you can get a better look. I don't know if you can see this, but the details on this engine are absolutely spectacular. And along here as well. And these are parts of the, what would be the uh, turbine blades at the, uh, at the front. There and there. Very, very impressive model. And here, more of the uh, rear parts where the exhaust would be coming out the back of, of the engines. Now, we'll have a little more of a look. Uh, and we have some of the doors that would cover the uh, landing gear and uh, then parts, more parts of the, the engine nacelles. And here is the ejection seat for the pilot. Uh, the pilot actually had a helmet mounted sights that uh, aided in um, locking onto enemy targets. Uh, even though the airframe on this was able to withstand nine Gs, which is nine times normal gravity, which is quite impressive and even then to maneuver around to get a shot at the enemy, even if they pulled away, the pilot could just move his head and lock onto him. Very, very impressive, actually. Um, in the fourth gen early fourth generation fighters uh, like this, they were the NATO and the West were very surprised at um, the uh, performance of the MiG-29. And now I'm gonna show you here. These are the underwing pylons, this is where the weapons would sit here three under each wing they were fairly close to the nacelles um, it was designed from the outset as an air superiority fighter the mig-29 although some multi-role ground attack uh, capabilities were built into it a little bit later and then i'll show you some more of the pylons up closer there and the pylons is where the weapons sit now this is something i want to show you that has really impressed me about this kit now, the weapons actually don't come, they have molding, obviously, but not in, not in one that has all of them together. They actually have each individual little ones here. And I really, really like this feature, actually, because it, I'll get this out. Now, here. Yeah, I'll hold it up to the camera so you can see. This is an, I'll move that back so you can see it a little better. This is an AA-10 Alamo missile, which was a medium range missile, had a range of about 75 kilometers. Although later versions, they could push it up to 105. Um, 
this would be on the inner pylon, the one closest, the closest to the engine nacelle. And one, one thing I like about this is when you have, if you've made a lot of aircraft models where they have um, missiles and weapons on them, at the very rear where the uh, rocket motor would be and propelling the missile forward is usually flat and solid. So if you wanted to have uh, the hole where the exhaust would come out, you actually had to drill into the back of it. But this one already has it in there which is excellent. I really like that feature. So there's two of those, one for each wing, and then four or two of the AA-11 Archer missiles that are here, that also have, that also have the rear drilled out and hollow, but this one has thrust thrust vectoring. The AA-11 Archer was uh, infrared guided, so a heat seeker, and it had a range of about 22 kilometers, actually. Uh, this one was, they call an all aspect missile, so it could maneuver quite drastically, even not long after launch. So it could do a very, very aggressive maneuver left or right to go after its target. Although that did reduce its range significantly. Yes, very, very impressed with that. And, um, I think you guys will be too, actually. Now I'm going to show you, move that off to the side. Now I'm going to show you, and here's the canopy. Excellent all-round field of view on the MiG-29, actually. Uh, it was a very big, very good advantage for the pilot in that aspect. Now, I know I've made this thing out to be really, really cool, which it is. But the drawbacks of the MiG-29 is it really did not last very long. Not at all. Its uh, airframe had a uh, total usage of 2,500 hours flight time, which is not very much at all. Um, its uh, counterpart, the F-16, had 6,000 hours worth of um, uh, flight time. So, yeah, they really did not last very long at all. Uh, other than the smoky engines, uh, its situational awareness was... Um, not as good, uh, not up to par with, uh, with Western fighters, actually. When um, East Germany and West Germany united, uh, the East German Air Force operated the MiG-29, and that's when the, the Western world, NATO, got to have a really good look at how this thing operates, and they found out that when it came to nighttime operating and bad weather, that the MiG-29 was significantly behind uh, in that aspect. And as a result of the, um, even though it was more maneuverable, uh, in combat against Western forces over the years, it has really not fared that well, actually. Um, five of them were shot down during the first Gulf War. I think they were all shot down by F-15s, actually. And yeah, they are slowly making their way into history. The Polish Air Force and so the Czechoslovakian Air Force operate the MiG-29, but now they've completely retired them altogether. Although the MiG-29 is now being developed into the MiG-35, which is an extremely impressive jet. Looks very similar actually as well. But yeah, all right, so that's that one, guys. That um, very cool kit, very impressive kit. Fantastic details. I think this one would come out really beautifully. If you put the effort into painting and panel washing, it would really be uh, something that you could look at and be very, very proud of. Um, Great Wall Hobbies, we've got a, uh, a fair few of their other kits in store as well. So you should check them out. I know you're going to love them. But yeah, cool. All right. Thanks for tuning in again, guys, and watching the videos that we put out for you. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I always look forward to seeing you in the store. In person, we can have a chat and uh, cool, cool. Once again, rock and roll, baby. Cheers.